exchanging something real for something real, it, it essentially takes it out of the matrix. When you're paying for it with commercial paper, then it's in the matrix. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not really paid for. Okay, again, it comes down to a use you fruct. Okay, are you familiar with a use you fruct? U S U F R U C T. Look it up. Okay, we're going to be talking about use you fructs. Okay, think about it. No doubt. But uh, the, uh, if you look in your wallet, you notice that you know that Federal Reserve notes are a promissory note, right? Okay, well, think about it. Uh, 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 what happens when you pay for something with a promissory note? It's not really paid for, is it? And a usufruct is a type of a trust. Okay? And so therefore, what happens when you pay for something with a promissory note, that's why they're spelling your name in all block capital letters, because it, it, when you pay for something with a promissory note, uh, it's not paid for. And so it's set up, you're setting up a trust, essentially, which is the usufruct. You get to use it, but you don't own it. It's not owned until it's paid for. But what happened is he exchanged labor for legal and equitable title in the vehicle. You see what I'm saying? So something real for something real, he took it out of the matrix. And, and now it's paid for. You see what I'm saying? It's not, uh, 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 there's no commercial paper involved. And that's why when I buy my land, and we'll talk about this, I, I pay for it with coin, with silver coin, and I put it on a deed. Okay, and, uh, and, and so then what I do two things. I pay for it with coin, and I, I bring forward all the rights and privileges of the land patent. And, and uh, um, so that's what I do. We'll talk about land when the time comes. That's coming. Anyways, so um, and we'll talk about that too. Something to think about. Um, so I make up my own picture ID. I record it. Are you a person? A person's a fictitious entity, a motor vehicle's commercial. Uh, private vehicle, I, I tell them in there that I'm not a person, okay? And I tell them that my motor vehicle is, is a private vehicle, okay? If you look in there, you'll see that uh, it says, as a matter of fact, my truck, if you go look at the truck out here, okay, it's got private vehicle. You want to go out there, we'll go out there and break, and I'll show you. It's got private vehicle on the, in, on the rear tailgate, okay? And, and the whole idea being is that it's not a motor vehicle. It's a private vehicle. And uh, it's not involved in commerce. You see what I'm saying? And, I, and because I'm the king, okay, I don't care whose plate's on it. And I tell them that. I tell them I might have RT plates. And if, and if you look in my document that I serve on them, and that's over here, the Notice and Demand to Corporate Commercial Agents, okay, I've got sample RT plates in there. And I tell them in there, I tell them I might have RT plates. I might have no plates. Uh, I, may, I may have state plates. It doesn't matter because... I am taking it back. I'm the king. I have that right. There's no valid contract. Remember, it's a nullity. You see what I'm saying? And so, so uh, I'm the king. I can do anything I want. And they don't have any authority. Everything they do is under color of law. So um, I tell them it's a private vehicle. I, I give them notice that I do not have a motor vehicle. I've seen vehicles in Arizona that have registration that's been expired for years. You know, it might be five, ten years. And they got a private vehicle on them. <coughs> They're still driving them around. And I'm guessing it's probably because the cops aren't bothering them. You see what I'm saying? Again, you got to notice them. A friend of mine told me that a cop came up to him. This was here in Texas, and I can't remember who that was. But somebody here in Texas told me that a cop came up to him and said, quote, why is my computer telling me to leave you alone? <laughs> I bet that's what they're saying about me now. Okay, I tell them, you're not authorized to serve commercial process on me. This defeats them in another way. You think that's all commerce. And so they're, sending, they're giving you a ticket. That's commercial process. Okay? That's, that's commercial. That's completely commercial. And so it defeats them in another way. It's until you tell them they cannot do that, they can presume they can. You see what I'm saying? You have to defeat their presumptions. Um... <coughs> I demand that they protect me. Uh, again, this is for Canada, but the United States is foreign to Texas, okay? And the state of Texas is a municipal corporation. That's a subcorporation of the municipal corporation called United States. And all courts, police, law enforcement officers are in the United States. I mean, all you gotta do is look at the flag that's in there. 
and all of their legislation is color of law, they have no authority. The United States is a municipal corporation. Canada is a municipal corporation domiciled in the District of Columbia. I didn't know if you know that. Canada is part of the United States. Matter of fact, Article 11 in the Articles of Confederation even says that Canada can join the Union anytime they want. <coughs> That's the only foreign state that's allowed to do that but it says and and canada's i got documents it's on my it's digital that shows that canada's a municipal corporation domiciled in the district of columbia so it's already here canada's part of the united states that's the reason the state of texas says the provinces of canada are are uh, uh you know um a state okay remember it says that well canada is is more or less voluntary you know i mean it's all martial law but um anyways um, in Canada, the FBI has offices in Ottawa, Toronto, Vancouver. The FBI has offices in, uh, in Europe and Germany. They've got offices all over the world. You know, uh, Philippines is part of the United States? I've seen court cases that talk about that. Okay? And, and huh? Guam. Yeah, Japan. Well, I know Guam. Is. Puerto Rico foreclosures. Are I know Puerto Rico is. Okay, so one of the things I tell them is that the use of codes, rules, and regulations, if you read that document, I, this is something I just got from somebody and it's really slick, and so I, you know, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I got from someone else and I've just been collecting it. But anyways, it says in there that uh, the use of codes, rules, and regulations uh, um, uh, uh, are not, uh, uh, should not be construed to imply that uh, I've agreed to any jurisdiction. Uh, you'd have to read it and see what it says, it's pretty good. Anyways, uh, commercial paper, if they receive payment in commercial paper, they're a municipal corporation. And uh, uh, also, and this is one thing that I put in my uh, uh, court documents to get out of paying filing fees, is that there's three requirements for a nation, okay? Uh, uh, people, money, and resources. And so I, I put on my document, I'm a holder of the office of the people, and then I also say that... Uh, that uh, I have at least $21 in silver, okay, and, and that I have absolute title to land, and, and that makes me a nation. And, uh, and so, um, again, that's, that was actually what I put in my documents that was, I, m all the other stuff was in those documents, and, and they would still not grant that the, the case proceed without the payment of fees. Well, when I started putting that in there, no problem ever since. Um, the only legitimate power that's held by any government is power that is delegated by we the people. And, uh, and if I delegate authority, I still retain that authority. And I, if I delegate authority, I can revoke it. And you saw that from some of the court cases we already talked about. I have, and this is another thing I tell them, is my rights are unalienable, not inalienable. And, uh, and, uh, and there's a difference. And I tell them also that any law merchant contract is a nullity and any contract with any fictitious entity is a nullity. In other words, at common law, the only valid contract is between living souls, okay? If there's a contract between me and a fictitious entity, it's not a contract, it's a nullity, it doesn't exist. And so that's what I tell them. I, it tells them I have the right to resist unlawful arrest with lethal force if necessary. I think we already talked about that a little bit. Uh, were the officers killed in the course of the, uh, of the disorder, which naturally accompanies an attempted arrest that, that is resisted? The law looks with very different eyes upon the transaction when the officer had the right to make the arrest from what it does when the officer has no right. What may be murder in the first case may be nothing more than manslaughter in the other, or the facts might show that no offense has been committed. Any restraint upon my liberty is an arrest. And that's what the courts have said. Um, any restraint is an arrest and I don't care what they want to call it it's an arrest <clears throat> and then I sign a seal of red ink on the land okay I always use red ink and uh, and uh, and it's signed on the land and uh, red ink is what sovereigns use the sovereigns use the right hand side of the page that's another thing judges always sign on the right hand side of the page okay always 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 sign on the right hand side Witnesses. I like to use two or three witnesses. Actually, I haven't even been using witnesses lately because I'm not sure that it's really necessary. Actually, getting, getting uh, uh, that chief judge to affect service for me is absolutely perfect. 
and uh, I don't need witnesses with that. <laughs> and uh, so, so, uh, but if you could get 26 witnesses, you could essentially say that I can convene a grand jury. <laughs> and so that's, that's kind of intimidating. Um, I always send my notice and demand by registered mail. Registered mail is kept under lock and key and there's a chain of custody. A better way to affect service is personal service with three or four people to make, each make an affidavit of service, but that is a lot of hassle. And uh, a lot of these judges don't make themselves easily accessible, and so uh, that makes it even more difficult. And the object is, is to build a case against them, and they know that's what's going on. And hopefully you never have to proceed, but at least you've, got, you've laid the foundation. If they do anything other than grovel, file a criminal complaint. I let them prove they're honoring their oath of office, and I attach my evidence, and I send the criminal complaint to the boss. If possible, record the criminal complaint into the public with the county recorder's office. After 30 days, I had their boss, and I already talked about this. Keep going up to the chain of command, up to the queen or the president. Uh, add the queen or the president, record the document into the public, and send them a copy. And uh, I always use registered mail or personal service with witnesses. This is an interesting thing in Canada. The Queen has decided recently not just to rubber stamp whoever the Prime Minister recommends for Governor General. In the past, in Canada, the Prime Minister would make a recommendation and the Queen would just go ahead and do it. And now she's hand-picking the Governor Generals. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I think it's because of stuff that I've been Senator and some other friends of mine. Um, there's a friend of mine, actually, that's been Senator and lots of interesting stuff, eh? And, uh, and he just accuses her of treason and perjury and all that stuff, eh? So uh, anyway, so, so I think, matter of fact, this last governor general took office here like last September, and I'll bet you, matter of fact, he even said that he went over there and, uh, and visited with the queen for about a week, and I'll bet you she had a pile of paperwork there, some of it from me, and she said, you know, I really wish I didn't get any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, it's, it's, it comes down to the, you know, and that's one thing that Canada's lucky in a way because there's only so much she's there and, and that, that the buck stops there, you know what I mean? And, and, and so in a way, uh, uh, it, you know, there's, there's, they're limited as to what, that's why in Alberta the worst thing they can do is you can't register your vehicle to get your driver's license. Well, whoop de doo <laughs> Here, I was driving around in Alberta with Texas plates for like six months. <laughs> And after a while, I, I mean, they didn't, of course, I, you know, I usually watch for the cops anyways, you know, but sometimes I miss it. At any rate, um, when you use this procedure in an ensuing action, it essentially becomes a counterclaim. Always take the initiative. Go on the attack. You got to be, what do they call it in engineering? Proactive. You got to be proactive. Okay? This, in engineering, that's what they tell us they want us to do, is they want us to be proactive. Okay? You got to be proactive. You got to be on the attack. You show up to the judge's office. Now, you can do this here. You can't do this in Canada. Uh, show up at the judge's office a few days before the hearing with witnesses <laughs> and, and demand, you know. You let them know who's boss. When in court, they always ask you, Do you understand? Now, this is something that.